Since it's been seven days since we last saw a Friday, CNN 10 did a special investigation and we can now confirm they're still awesome. It's like they're on a roll. I'm Carl Azus with your down the middle explanation of current events. In four days, Americans will be going to the polls. They'll be determining the entire makeup of the House of Representatives and about a third of the makeup of the Senate. They'll be determining who will be the governors of 36 states and who will fill more than 6,600 state positions and thousands more local ones. That's according to the New York Times. Campaigning is full steam ahead. President Donald Trump has joined other Republican leaders in campaigning for Republican House and Senate candidates. Republicans want strong borders, no crime, no chaos, and no caravans. <laughs> Democrats want open borders, and they want to invite caravan after caravan into our country, which brings crime upon crime. Former President Barack Obama has joined other Democratic leaders in campaigning for Democratic House and Senate candidates. America's at a crossroads right now. The health care of millions of people is on the ballot. Making sure working families get a fair shake is on the ballot. But maybe most importantly, the character of our country is on the ballot. In the Senate, Republicans are in control with 51 seats to the Democrats' 49. And while 35 Senate seats are up for election in these midterms, most of them, 26 seats, are held by Democrats. So they have more seats to defend in these midterms than Republicans do. In the House, all 435 voting members are up for election. Here's how those numbers shake out. Here's a look at the current balance of power in the House of Representatives. 235 Republicans, 193 Democrats, and there are seven vacancies in the current House. Here's what we're really focusing on in terms of the election this year. It's this middle part. Don't pay attention so much to the dark blue or dark red. Those are safe seats for both parties. It's these 30 seats in the middle that are true toss-ups. They could fall either way. Add in 14 that lean to the Democrat or 21 that lean to the Republican, and you've got a universe here of 65 competitive seats. This is the battleground. 10 second trivia who said autumn is a second spring when every leaf is a flower elizabeth barrett browning albert camus james joyce or robert frost this poetic reflection on fall came from the french author albert camus Something else that happens in autumn, though it's less poetic, is the time switch. Falling back, gaining an extra hour of sleep if you plan your Saturday night well. That's because on Sunday morning at 2 a.m., almost all of the U.S. turns its clock back one hour as daylight saving time comes to an end. Time changes in spring and fall are made throughout North America, most of Europe, a few countries in Africa, and in scattered places around the world. They don't always turn back their clocks on the same day. But the fact that it happens at all brings up the same questions twice a year. Daylight saving time sounds kind of special. You're not just saving time, you're saving daylight time. But it puzzles the daylights out of some folks why we fall back to standard time. That's what it's called, standard time. We spend eight months out of the year in daylight saving time, but standard, which is hardly the standard, is still called standard. It's been shrinking since World War I. That's when daylight saving time was first implemented to save energy. The switch made the sunset time later in the day, so people didn't have to turn their lights on as early. But what about winter and the fall back to standard? Well, look at it this way. Most parts of the U.S. only get about nine and a half hours of daylight in wintertime. That's not much. If we didn't set our clocks back in the fall, sunrise wouldn't be until 8.30 a.m. in many places. You'd be starting and ending your day in the dark. Falling back to standard keeps the time of dawn a little closer to what we're used to. It helps us start our day in the light. Plus, there's that whole extra hour of sleep thing, assuming you go to bed on time when we fall back. So less daylight, but more sleep. Unless you happen to live in Arizona or Hawaii, most parts of Arizona and all of Hawaii don't observe daylight saving time. They don't have to. It's not required by law. In high school, it's hard enough to score a perfect five on your AP exams. Probably harder still when those exams are on macro and micro economics. And if you have to teach those subjects to yourself, well, you get it. The kid's smart. But the fact that Manal Malik is also a leader in sports and her community make her a great fit for our Positive Athlete series. People 
look at Manal and they say, she's a bright kid, right? She's got 36 on her ACT, national merit semifinalist, right? And they don't see the work that goes in behind that. I wake up every morning at 4 a.m. I don't care, it's Saturday, Sunday, Friday. Every day I wake up 4 a.m. and I get that workout in. There's a connection between the individual sport of like cross country of pushing yourself as a metaphor for her pushing herself in the classroom, pushing herself in the community. She's definitely wired a different way. My parents, they came right from Pakistan. My grandfather wasn't even like literate at all. My dad had to work for himself like to get his own money to go to medical school and come to America. So seeing them and growing up around them, seeing how hard they worked for us so we could have a better life, that really made me realize and be thankful for all that I have because I don't understand like how I'm the one who's sitting here with the opportunity to get this education, to get to pull myself and help other people alongside me. Because what's the difference between me and someone else who's sitting in another country without this opportunity? I need to make the most of my opportunity so I can go back and help them. It's just amazing what she has accomplished, what she's going to continue to accomplish. She's a, 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 a triumph of the human spirit. She's the leader of the team. She's been on the team four years now, and now you know, she's at the top of her game. She wants to leave a legacy for the school. She wants the, you know, the players to follow in her footsteps and, and make Haynes Academy cross country, especially for the girls, better each year and be one of the best in the state. I would be disappointed if the greatest thing that she ever accomplished was occurring right now in her life because she is, she is moving on to bigger and better things. The goal is to join Doctors Without Borders and work in these less developed countries where they really need help, especially with all the, all, everything that's going on with the Muslims around the world. I just really want to help them. We've started this Youth Muslim Sisters with our mosque, which is a more personal issue for me. A couple years back, a family come directly from Syria. They couldn't speak English. They were in horrible conditions. So our youth group took the initiative to organize tutoring sessions for them so we could help them really learn English, which was a great barrier for them in coming to this country. For them to come and have an environment where they could really be understood was just really important to them. And seeing them so happy really made me really happy. Manal's greatest achievements are not going to end when she graduates in May. We haven't seen them yet. They're yet to come. For 10 out of 10 today, bet you didn't know there's a Guinness World Record for the largest synchronized car dance. I didn't either until I saw this. Dozens of SUVs driving simultaneously in the shape of a giant falcon. The Nissan Motor Company put this together. Its SUVs have a few records like this, and with 180 of them taking part, this event beat the previous record for largest synchronized car dance by 37 vehicles. Guess it takes more than two to tango for that record, and while there's plenty of braking and locking, they're probably going for more line dancing in sync than popping or shaking, which could set off some alarms with insurance companies. I'm Carla Zeus, and dance all for today's show. Hope you all have a great weekend ahead. <laughs>